So welcome to the Mega Man Timeline, a guide to everything connected from start to finish. We're going to be here talking about the Mega Man lore and all the games of the main timeline, starting from the classic series all the way up to Mega Man Legends. You're probably wondering who's this guy rambling to you. My name is Justin Guiu. I'm the anime news manager for a site known as Operation Rainfall. We cover a lot of RPGs. But I was invited by my good friend Jared to come up here and talk about Mega Man since he's a big Mega Man fan and I'm a big Mega Man fan and I assume many of you are as well. Get out! <laughs> What's a Mega Man? He's, the, he's that, you know, Metroid ripoff. <laughs> All right, so we can get started. <clears throat> Some notes of this presentation is that we're not going to necessarily cover every single Mega Man game because there are some games that don't really have any significance to the overall arcing story of the series. And also, we are going to be covering some fan theories because there are some significant gaps, especially between the classic series and the X series. So some speculation is required, so keep an open mind and we'll be good. So we're going to get started in the year 20XX. Pre-game events, this is before the first game. So Dr. Light and Dr. Wily work together on advanced robotics designs. A little note is that in the Japanese version of the lore, Dr. Light and Dr. Wily were not colleagues at all, which is kind of interesting because we've always known that Dr. Light and Dr. Wily were friends, they were buddies, you know, I think it was implied that they went to school together or something like that. But yeah, um, actually, in the Japanese version, that's not true at all. But of course, this really doesn't have much bearing on the rest of the canon. So for simplicity's sake, we will follow the canon as understood by most people, meaning that they were, in fact, colleagues. So back to what they actually did. So they both jointly developed a Robot Master template with Blue's Proto Man being the first one and the very first Robot Master designation, DLN-000. Dr. Light's uh, robots would have that kind of designation just as a way to say, oh, these are Dr. Light's robots. And we'll see that Dr. Wiley will have his own uh, designation number as well. Back to Proto Man. Unfortunately, he's lacking a prime directive as guidance. So he's kind of lost and is kind of wondering, where, where am I going to go in society? I don't really have a place right now. And unfortunately, he's kind of depressed. Poor little Proto Man. I can see you over here, poor Proto Man. She's very sad. Um, Dr. Light and Dr. Wiley, they split up after Proto Man runs away, stemming from differences on how to handle him. I was a fool. Dr. Light makes Robot Masters again. This time, they're known as Rock and Roll. Guess where that came from, Rock and Roll. How creative. But they have simple directives so that they are neither lonely nor without purpose. Designation numbers. Dr. Light number 001 and 002, respectively. Dr. Light also creates the first line of industrial robot masters, Cut Man, Fire Man, Bomb Man, Ice Man, Elect Man, and Guts Man. And they are for commercial use, so they'll be helping around the town and all the cities. And of course, they're the first bosses in the first game. So now we actually get to the first Mega Man game. Dr. Wily seeks revenge on Dr. Light for success on Robot Master series because Dr. Light's getting all the credit on these robots despite Dr. Wily helping out as well. So he's kind of jealous of him. He's kind of just like, why is he getting all the credit? I also help too. I'm also smart. So Rock, he's feeling a sense of justice. He volunteers to turn himself into Mega Man. And he defeats Dr. Wily for the very first time. <laughs> Of course, that's just the beginning of the long, the very, very, very long fight. Because as we see in Mega Man 2, Dr. Wily starts building his own robot masters. And that creates the DWN series of robots, the Dr. Wily numbers. And these robots are basically designed to destroy Mega Man. Dr. Wily just wants revenge. He's out for blood. And sometime after, Wily finds Proto Man and promises to fix his broken core to give him a sense of purpose. But not after, you know, getting his butt kicked by Mega Man and Mega Man 2. So he gives Proto Man an unstable nuclear core, which gives Proto Man more power than any typical robot master we've seen up until this point. And at the same time, he also gives Proto Man a limited lifespan, making him kind of human because un unlike, unlike humans, robots can't die, but Proto Man actually does have a limited lifespan. So that's kind of interesting. And we're going to get back to robots being more human-like a little later on. But of course, he's given a shield and a modification to his helmet. 
and he is now given the nickname Breakman. In Mega Man 3, Wily threatens the world once again, and of course, Mega Man responds. And after several duels with this mysterious Breakman, Mega Man makes his way to Wily, and surprise, surprise, he beats him. Breakman has a change of heart at the end, and he returns to being Proto Man. He returns to the shadows and observes Mega Man's progress. And that's when, in Mega Man 3, you had that ending where it's all dramatic. It says, Proto Man, he's the very first Dr. Light robot. And it's just like, whoa, this was Dr. Light's robot all this time? I didn't know that. My mind flown. So Mega Man 4 through 6, nothing too significant happens in these games. You know, there's, there's a tournament that's you know, brought up by this guy named Mr. X. And surprise, surprise, it's Dr. Wily. And... Who wants to guess what happens to Dr. Wily in all three of those games? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but other than that, nothing of note really happens in those three games. However, something kind of interesting does happen at the end of Mega Man 6 where Mega Man finally arrests Dr. Wily. But Dr. Wily was smart. He was smart because he was also working on a robot, a mysterious robot that's said to be incredibly powerful, using this new material known as basinium or fortanium, depending on the translation. This is the court, guys. <laughs> yeah, she's biased, so that's why I say that. So, this new material appears to imbue robots with colossal power. So, we're not too sure what this robot is or what their power possibly is at all, but we just know that. They're going to be a threat at some point in the future. Now, also at the same time, Dr. Wiley has eight robots in reserve. He programs them to go off and to activate as soon as he is unable, to, as soon as he leaves his lab and let's say he's in custody. So as soon as he's unable to cause chaos, he has these robots to be programmed so that they can wake up by themselves and break him out of jail. And that's where Mega Man 7 begins. And Mega Man also encounters Base, and we're not too sure if Base is an ally or a foe. It's kind of one of those, are you my friend or are you my enemy? And of course, despite being technically stronger than Mega Man, Base is defeated. And Dr. Wily retreats. And Mega Man starts to believe, maybe this Base guy is not such a bad guy after all. We could be friends. And of course, Mega Man 8 happens, where there's an infamous intro. What is it? Base, we're not enemies! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> so Mega Man 8 starts off with these two robots. They're in space and they're fighting each other. And then they crash land on this planet. And we're not too sure what these two robots really are. And uh, this also brings up the evil energy. It becomes a major plot point in Mega Man 8, which is also kind of important for the series because it introduces the concept that there is some correlation between emotions and energy. Does it sound shonen? Yes, it is. But it works in the Mega Man universe and this actually will come into play later on as well. This robot over here, so there's not like a whole lot known about this robot other than they come from outer space because you see this robot for one cutscene in the very beginning of Mega Man 8. Literally, the green biker dude of the eight of the Mega Man series. So, Dr. Wily finds the eight traces of evil energy that come from this evil robot. So, it's assumed that once this evil robot crash lands onto planet Earth, the evil energy that it had was spread across the world. Dr. Wily got it, put it into some robots, and started to cause trouble. Of course, surprise, surprise, Mega Man beats him, and yeah, the day is saved. Yay! But, something kind of interesting about that is in a 2003 interview with Keiji Inafune for Planet Mega Man, Inafune revealed that Duo, which is the other robot that crash landed and ended up helping Mega Man, he's part of a space police force. But he doesn't really elaborate any further on this. So, he, and he says that the plot doesn't go that deep because it's an action game. How insightful. So uh, unfortunately, because of this, no further info is really known about Duo or that robot. Like I said, that robot on the, um, on the left right there, we see him for one cutscene, and that's it. <laughs> so, you know, eventually, Dr. Wily is defeated, 
and there's no official correlation between evil energy and fortanium, so it's not implied that base had evil energy. The evil energy and base are two separate entities. And after Wally's defeat, Duo leaves planet Earth to go find more trace of the evil energy in the universe, and yeah, that's, that's the end of Mega Man 8, and that's the end of Duo. So of course, Mega Man Base, sometime later, Dr. Wily creates a new robot named King that is said to be even more powerful than both Mega Man and Base combined. Now, Base is, that, you know, Base, that uh, ruffles his jimmies a little bit, and he's just like, oh no, there is not gonna be another robot more powerful than I am. Exactly. <laughs> so of course, they go on and they fight, they duke it out, and they win, and you know, they saved once again. So the Mega Man Arcade, which ironically enough is probably like the most important game in the entire classic series franchise for just one cutscene. So in the Mega Man Arcade games, uh, Duo returns to help Mega Man defeat Dr. Wily again, and he remarks that he can sense justice energy within Base and Mega Man. So I guess Mega Man was right. Base isn't a bad guy. So good emotions can create justice energy, which is the opposite of evil energy. Once again, very shonen. Now, if you played as base in the Mega Man Arcade games, you get a really interesting cutscene at the end where Dr. Wily reveals that he's working on a brand new robot. What is that robot? I'm sure many of you guys will not guess what robot that is. <laughs> it's Metal Gear. <laughs> this, this creation would be revealed to be zero. Designation number, DWN Infinity, meaning who knows how much power this guy has. It's probably gonna be crazy. So Zero appears to be built entirely out of Fortanium, making him even more powerful than base. And yeah, we're gonna be seeing a lot more of this guy soon. So that brings us to Mega Man 9, where Dr. Wily convinces eight robot masters to work for him, or otherwise they'll be discarded because they reached their government mandated expiration date. And Dr. Wily rescues these robots and makes them fight for him, promising that they will no longer be tools for humans to throw away. But of course, he's just saying that. And, uh, and that's kind of interesting that um, we're mentioning government-mandated expiration date, because by this point in the series, you know, we're talking about robots, but we're not talking about the society around them, right? So what are the common people thinking about Mega Man literally going around blowing up these giant robots? What about the, what about the civilians? What are they thinking? They're obviously, they're afraid. <laughs> I mean, these giant robots with all these like crazy powers, that's, that's a huge threat to humanity. So of course, the government's getting involved in this, and they're starting to make some regulations on these robots. So that's a kind of a, that's some foreshadowing too, because this is going to come to more play later on. Surprise, surprise! Dr. Y is defeated again for like the 10th time at this point. <laughs> the initial eight robot masters are now allowed to have real jobs, and their lives are preserved for now. Dr. Light recognizes the problem with treating robots like tools, which was what I was mentioning before, how Dr. Wily was kind of able to get into these robots' head by saying, you guys are just tools. The humans don't care about you. And yeah, and Dr. Light's starting to realize, yeah, that's kind of a real concern. Like these robots, they don't really have a real sense of purpose. They just are designed to do that one thing and humans can take advantage of that. Obviously, we've had several games where robots are fighting each other because our humans are telling them to. So that's kind of a big concern. And he wants to try to remedy that situation or work on a way to possibly fix it. In Mega Man 10, Dr. Wily unleashes a computer virus on a world known as Roboenza, fun name. Mega Man, Proto Man, and Base are all infected by the virus, but they seem to be able to resist it temporarily. Eventually, surprise, Mega Man defeats Dr. Wily and releases the cure to the virus upon the public. So that brings us to Mega Man 11. Mega Man fights Wily again, yes, no. <laughs> then things happen, we get some Bowers, maybe some cool music, and profit! <laughs> so we're obviously skipping ahead of Mega Man 11 because we don't know how that ties into the story. So we're gonna assume that Mega Man 11 doesn't exist just for a second and we're gonna go into the era we're gonna call the post Enza era. And this section is very, specula is like very speculative. You know, obviously not a lot of it is here. After all, it's just the theory. <laughs> After the events of Mega Man 9 and 10, 
humanity discusses whether or not to treat robot masters as people, since they basically act like people, but they're not people. The only one that is like a person is Proto Man, since he can die. Robo Enza, however, has made mankind scared to trust robots. And had it not been for Mega Man, those robots would have overthrown humanity in a heartbeat. So obviously, the humans are afraid. And once again, the robots are stripped of their free will because the humans, they don't want these robots to, over, to overthrow them. They don't want them to start killing and to start taking over the world. So because of this, the Robot Master Project is halted for fear that another virus will strike again. And the logic is that Wiley cannot use robots against the world again if there are no more robots with him. So Mega Man and the rest of Dr. Life's family are allowed to function on for on a limited basis, so there's a lot of restrictions. So, you know, it's kinda it's kinda messed up. Mega Man saved the world all these times and yet the man's still putting him down. So sad. So the ban on advanced robotics is likely an uh, overcompensation for humanity for using too many robots, even for simple things, which is stated in the Mega Man 10 manual. And in the Japanese manual for X1, however, there it is also suggested that the Dr. Wily incidents, quote unquote, created a fear for robots. And this fear of robots is only gonna be amplified in coming years. Since Mega Man was infected by that robo virus, e even though he was able to resist it, they, they're feared that he is actually that much more of a threat to the world, despite the fact that he is good and he has saved us several times. So Dr. Light seeks to fix this by creating a robot that can not be over overcome by a virus. And that is beyond moral question. And one robot that can really kind of pick his own path in life, he's not restricted by his programming. And this special project is known as X. X being a variable, as an unlimited potential. So this is a robot that can do whatever he chooses to do. And I'm sure many of you can, can guess which robot that is, Mega Man X. However, this is very dangerous, and Dr. Light himself is even fearful of Mega Man X's unlimited potential, and as a result, he actually seals him away for a long time, fearing that mankind just isn't quite ready for him. And he figures that, and he writes in his test documents that he should be sealed away for 30 years. However, Mega Man, actually, Mega Man X actually gets sealed away for longer than that. And unfortunately, and before he seals him away, or actually this might be happening at the same time, it's never really explicitly stated when he does this, but Dr. Light actually sets up several capsules around the world because he knows that Mega Man X will be awakened well after his death, well after Dr. Light passed away, presumably of old age. So he wanted a way to continue to mentor and teach Mega Man X after his death. So he created these capsules around the world that would give Mega Man X upgrades and also provide advice to him. And eventually, at first it's just mere upgrades and pre-recorded messages, but eventually he would make more advanced capsules that actually have a sentient AI that is completely aware of the situations going on, as we see in the later Mega Man X games where he somehow knows zero. Yeah, this is basically just saying what I just said, where he made two versions of the capsules, one where it's just a pre-recorded message and one later on where he is actually, you know, he's actually aware of the situation going on. That sounds like a massive plot hole, but we're trying to make it make sense, so bear with me. <laughs> yeah, Mega Man is the most perfect story ever. <laughs> so at some point, Dr. Light buries X once he seals him away in a capsule and he passes away, he kicks the bucket, presumably of old age. And Dr. Wiley also passes away and we don't know exactly how, but it's presumed to be old age as well. However, not before stealing away his own robot, known as Zero, as we mentioned before. And this robot um, is given a perfected form of Roboenza. So it's presumed that the virus that Zero has, as we know in the later games, is actually a modified version of the Roboenza virus. So Dr. Wiley, he seals Zero away with hopes that he will be able to settle his score with Dr. Light. He just doesn't know when to let it go. Jeez. And according to the Rockman Zero timeline and official Capcom guidebook, Zero was sealed in a capsule because of a cognitive error that made him very violent and uncontrollable. And this virus, the Zero virus, is meant to be actually a patch for that error. 
So there, so what it does is it actually reprograms his mind to not make him violent. And that little like cutscene, that's actually from X4, where um, that kind of alludes to that. So the fate of Mega Man role and all other robots is that they're presumably deactivated or deconstructed by the authorities. And that's sad. Poor Mega Man. And the Robot Master Museum, which used to store old deactivated robots, is also liquidated for similar reasons. Humans, they just they don't want them anymore. They're just done. And the world is peaceful for a long period of time. It's nice. And Dr. Light, you know, he's considered to be a legend, and Dr. Wily a menace. But of course, it's not going to be peaceful forever. We all know things are going to go down again. So Dr. Kane, this is like over 100 years later. Dr. Kane, he's an archaeologist and a scientist. He discovers ruins, presumably the ruins of Dr. Light's lab. And he comes across this mysterious capsule that has an X on it. Like, what is X? X marks a spot? Like, what is this supposed to be? So it turns out that X was actually sealed for 100 years, which is 70 longer than intended, which is crazy. And Dr. Kane, he, he opens this capsule, and he's examining this robot. He's like, wow, this is super advanced. Like, wow, I can't even wrap my hand behind this. And he sees X as a quantum leap ahead of anything the world has ever seen, even for that time. And he continues to work on X, and eventually X is reactivated, and he tries to replicate X's design. And when he creates a new robot in his image, they're called a reploid, as in like a replica of the android, replicated android. And reploids go into mass production and become integrated into society, which is ready to accept advanced robotics again, and they start to become dependent on them. So in a sense, history repeats itself. <laughs> Ironically enough, X wouldn't be considered a reploid because he's the original. Same for Zero. And uh, we have two kind of robots in the Mega Man X world. We have the Reploids and then we have Mechanoloids. Reploids are like Mega Man X where they can kind of think for themselves. But Mechanoloids are just simple robots that have just one task and they do that. Kind of like the old Robot Masters, but they just come up with the term to differentiate between the two. And unfortunately, <laughs> The first Reploid on human violence occurs, and uh, the Reploid starts, you know, they're obviously more powerful than the humans are, and adjustments are made to their internal systems, but that doesn't stop them from causing crime. And to respond to the growing Reploid attacks, a new task force is made up of Reploids is created known as the Maverick Hunters, and Mavericks is a term that is used to describe any kind of Reploid that decides to start doing criminal behavior, like they might start killing people or robbing people. And what's kind of interesting about the whole Maverick thing is no one's quite sure where it comes from. Is it just misprogramming? Like, is it that they just weren't programmed properly? Or was it intentional misprogramming? Or better yet, are these robot masters just, oh, well, not robot masters, are these reploids just evil just for the sake of being evil? It's the ghost of <laughs> That's a, that's a plot twist. Don't spoil. <laughs> so as I mentioned, the Maverick Hunters, they are created as a way to counter these, uh, I guess these terrorists, we can call them that. And X joins these hunters in the 17th unit. And um, they're, the, the crime that they're committing is kind of interesting because they kind of mirror human behavior too. So they're doing a lot of things that you know, human criminals would do, which, is, which kind of raises some interesting like, concerns and questions about these robots. Are they truly becoming like the humans if they're able to mimic both good guys and bad guys? So those questions are starting to come up, but they're still not entirely sure what the cause of all this is. And Dr. Kane creates Sigma, the most advanced robot to date, and he's advertised as maverick proof. So as in, he will never become a maverick. He'll never do anything bad. He is just an angel. <laughs> this time it'll be different. <laughs> so, one day Sigma responds to a lone maverick that destroyed an entire unit of hunters. And he's trying to figure out, what is this? What's going on? And he confronts this reploid, which turns out to be Zero who is just insane. Zero is out for blood. He is seeing red right now. He is just ready to just wreck everything. In their fight, Zero pins him, creating two scars on his eyes during a scuffle, which strikingly resembles the purple marks that we often see him with. And 
eventually there's a W that appears in Zero's forehead gem and Sigma punches it, which causes a, uh, his circuit to short circuit and that shatters this gem and deactivates Zero temporarily. And that little W that comes up is what we mentioned before about the virus patching Zero and helping him um, not be violent. However, that little patching process is interrupted when Sigma punched him. So we're not sure what happened there. All right, want to take it away from here, Jared? Yeah, you've been doing a lot of talking. <laughs> Jared's gonna talk about how Sigma was infected. Infected. Take it away, Jared. All righty. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? All right. Sorry for being a little bit late. Uh, there's a lot more people here than I expected. Just want to say thanks for everyone for coming out. Uh, I was collecting some raffle tickets, as you saw. But uh, I'll take it from here. Justin, thank you very much. We're going to be yeah, switching man. off from here. All right. So Sigma is now infected, uh, but the virus doesn't seem to take effect immediately. And Zero's taken back to the Hunter Lab for testing, because obviously if anyone can kick Sigma's butt, it must be worth keeping around. <laughs> Uh, as Justin was mentioning, Zero losing his memory, uh, he's basically integrated into the Hunters. He doesn't have any recollection of being some sort of psychotic killer or anything like that, which is fortunate for him, otherwise he probably would have been put down. Uh, but the two of them resume service as Maverick Hunters, uh, both working as some of their top performers. Uh, so before when Zero got you know, slugged right in the head, uh, it's kind of like when you turn your computer off and it says, do not turn off your computer during these updates. That's basically what happened. Uh, Zero was knocked out. It, it shut him off during, those, uh, during that patching process. Uh, and it basically erased the personality that was being forcefully injected into his brain. Um, and that's why everything before that punch uh, seems to show up as corrupted or fragmented. And Zero can only really remember it during his dreams. So uh, at some point, Sigma finally decides, all right, he's had enough playing nice. He becomes fully infected, and he gains the support of uh, most of the Maverick Hunters that are currently in service. They all decide, hey, this Sigma guy's got some pretty good ideas. I think the humans are kind of trash. Let's go ahead and kick him out this planet. So uh, he, res he strangely retains most of his personality. Most Mavericks up to this point, uh, if they're not just being criminals, um, they tend to lose control uh, of their senses and their urges, and they kind of go nuts. Uh, Sigma, on the other hand, even though he's become infected, kind of just remains like a chill dude. Um, whether or not Sigma would have rebelled against humanity um, is brought into question if he was infected or not. Perhaps he didn't need to be infected because um, his personality doesn't change that much. So it's kind of something to think about. So with all the other Maverick Hunters deciding that they're going to switch teams and unbalance the entire game, X and Zero are the only two people left to carry the team. And uh, they decide that they're going to go single-handedly confront Sigma and totally demolish his army, which they do in the excellent game known as Mega Man X1. It's terrible. <laughs> it only revolutionized the SNES, but you know, whatever. <laughs> so Vile, an ex-Maverick Hunter, confronts the two of them, and Zero decides that, you know, in order to save X, he has to sacrifice himself. He overloads his core and blows up, uh, and there's a big dramatic moment. Uh, but unfortunately, Vile's right armor is uh, the only thing destroyed. Vile is still standing. He decides that he's going to fight X once and for all, and he captures him in this snare. He starts taunting X and telling him, like, you know, you're worthless, and Zero was an idiot for blowing himself up. Uh, but X then begins to surge with uh, possibly what we consider justice energy, as mentioned by Duo way back in Mega Man 8. And it seems to repair all of X's damage, and it frees him from Vile's electrical snare, and then he goes and defeats him. If you went back and got the Hadouken, it's a very quick fight. Uh, X continues to hunt down the remaining Maverick Hunters that are still loyal to Sigma's cause in Mega Man X2. Uh, that's pretty much the bulk of the plot. Uh, but then there's this trio of people called the X Hunters who are uh, holding pieces of Zero hostage as bait for X. Um, so, Dr. Kane informs X that the X Hunters might have all of Zero's parts, but they're missing his control chip. And it's not quite clear what that control chip does, but basically without it, they can't put Zero back together again. Uh, X manages to defeat the X Hunters, and Zero is revived, having received upgrades from an X Hunter named Sergis? Serges? I'm not quite sure. Uh, and it gives him Zero's trademark square shoulders, the vent on his chest, and of course, his legendary beam saber. Um, 
X goes on to defeat the rest of the X hunters and Sigma for the second time, and Sigma reveals to X that his true form is that of a virus. He's no longer confined to a physical body, and he may revive endlessly. I think we got all the way up to X8, so yeah, it's pretty endless. Uh, so Sergei's involvement with Zero is pretty important, as it is, it is implied that he holds the virtual consciousness of Dr. Wiley. Um, it's not quite clear how Wiley keeps doing this, uh, but basically, he knows everything about Zero Systems, he knows how to upgrade him, and he knows how to put him back together, which is something that none of the other X-Hunters can do. As a matter of fact, in the Japanese script for the game, uh, Serkis mentions something to, the, something to the tune of, I was defeated by Dr. Light's memento robot again, regretful, referring to X's status as Dr. Light's last creation. Uh, this kind of sounds like he's been defeated by Dr. Light's robots in the past, so maybe it is Dr. Wily, we're not quite clear. Uh, Mega Man Extreme is an excellent game for the Game Boy. I recommend everyone play it or get it, uh, but nothing important really happens, so. We're gonna skip Just right cool over. art. It's great art, <laughs> I love the character design, but yeah. Uh, so around the time Mega Man X3 comes out, um, a cure is finally developed for Mavericks. Um, Reploids start moving en masse to Doppler Town. It's a Reploid utopian city to basically be uh, immunized to the Maverick virus. They're like, finally, we don't have to worry about becoming infected anymore. Uh, unfortunately, like all good things, it turns out that this is a placebo, and it's in fact just the Maverick virus in waiting, uh, and now there's an entire city full of crazy Maverick robots. <laughs> it certainly was. Um, so, as usual, X goes on to defeat the, eight new, uh, the new eight Mavericks and Dr. Doppler, and he finds out that Dr. Doppler was actually infected by Sigma. It wasn't really his doing. He didn't want to infect all of those robots. Uh, and he goes on, of course, to defeat Sigma, um, but Sigma's virus form follows X out of the exploding fortress as it begins to crumble. Uh, however, Zero conveniently decides that he's going to teleport into the scene, uh, and he shows up to confront Sigma, and he uses um, his beam saber, which has now been imbued with the antivirus uh, to the Maverick virus, meaning there actually is, in fact, a cure. Um, it's just that the one that Doppler was distributing was obviously a fake. Now, the interesting thing here um, is that you might be wondering, well, how the heck can an antivirus be in a beam saber? I've never seen, you know, McAfee do that before, but... Um, you got to use Norton. Or Norton, for that matter. <laughs> uh, but basically, in the Mega Man universe, um, Energy and mass and physical objects and data and things like that are all kind of interchangeable, uh, and that becomes really important later on. Uh, so although a real cure does exist, unfortunately administering the cure cannot really be done very easily, uh, and at this point it's still just easier to kill and destroy Mavericks than it is to capture them and try to forcefully cure them of the Maverick virus. Um, but the fact that a virus exists is still very important. So in Mega Man Extreme 2, this one is also for the Game Boy. It is also an excellent game. I recommend everyone play it. The concept of a DNA soul is introduced. Uh, the DNA soul controls all aspects of a reploid, basically right down to their appearance, their memories, and all of their vital systems. It's kind of like human DNA, but, you know, for robots. Um, nothing else of importance really happens, but this little bit of information about DNA souls is vital to later parts of the timeline. So in Mega Man X4, to help deal with the large-scale Maverick attacks that have been going on, like with Doppler Town and all that other stuff, um, basically the Maverick Hunters are getting spread a little bit too thin. They're supposed to really just be like a Maverick police force, um, but they can't keep doing all these large-scale military operations. So a new form of Maverick Hunters is created called the Repla Force. If the Maverick Hunters are the police, the Repla Force is basically the military. Uh, also, Zero at some point begins having dreams about Dr. Wily as those corrupted images start f rushing back to his mind. Um, and he remembers murdering tons of Reploids, but he's not really sure why he's having these dreams. And he also falls in love with a Repl Force operator named Iris. Um, also, outside of the English manual, the Repl Force isn't really given an origin, but I mean, the one that they give in the manual makes a lot of sense, so I'm going to go ahead and say that's what happens. Um, and also in various source books and interviews with developers, um, they imply that there's actually multiple kinds of Maverick Hunters, not just the ones that X and Zero are. Um, there's like a Navy, there's an Air Force, and things like that. So they're, they kind of have uh, Maverick Hunters spread throughout various branches. It's just that, you know, we don't follow them because the game wouldn't be called Mega Man, it'd be called something else. Maybe like Green Biker Dude Cavalry Squad or something. Uh, so in Mega Man X4, um, the Repl Force is framed uh, for the destruction of Sky Lagoon. It's basically a floating city, which in my opinion is a terrible idea, but they decided, you know, whatever, we can do it. We're Mega Man people. 
Um, so basically, um, a giant Repliforce robot goes and destroys the generator that's holding up Sky Lagoon. Um, the humans assume the worst and figure, oh no, the Repliforce has gone maverick. X and Zero go ahead and respond, and they're like, hey guys, what are you doing? And Repliforce is like, we didn't do it, we were trying to help. And instead of doing things peacefully, they basically bicker back and forth, and Repliforce says, oh, forget you guys, we're gonna go leave Earth. So they fly up to a giant orbital space station, basically, um, and they're like, we're gonna declare independence. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think you can peacefully declare independence by flying up to a giant orbital laser cannon, but I mean, I'm not from the Mega Man universe. It so was the can. 90s. It was the 90s, you know. Uh, this, of course, is all according to Sigma's plan. He figures if he can get the Repliforce and the Maverick Hunters fighting each other, they'd be at each other's throats, and then he can swoop in and take over the world. Because, you know, that's worked out so well for him in the past. So, uh, Zero makes it a final weapon, and he confronts Iris, who has now turned Maverick. Uh, Iris isn't just turning Maverick because she's mad about Colonel, although that is basically one of the factors. Um, I don't have it here on the slide, but a little known factoid is that uh, Iris and Colonel were originally one Reploid. Um, they were supposed to be um, some sort of compassionate Reploid, but also have the ability to command armies with authority and, and great skill. Uh, but they found that those two conflicting personalities didn't work, so they were split. Uh, Iris basically takes Colonel's personality chip and integrates it into her own body, which then makes her go berserk, and that's why she turns into that giant purple robot thing that you fight up on Final Weapon. Uh, Zero defeats Iris, and he questions his purpose as a hunter. You all know how it goes. I'm not going to say it. Uh, what am I fighting for? Thank you. <laughs> I had to. If I didn't say someone else would. You know what? Yeah, it's true. We, we, it's, it's, it's tradition. Uh, so eventually Zero does confront uh, Sigma, and of course he's like, hey, you're the one who's behind it. Um, so Zero and Sigma start having memories together, and they start you know, reminiscing about a better time when Zero had blood on his hands and he was killing everyone around him. Um, and Zero basically realizes, oh no, I'm the original Maverick, and Sigma is like, you know, yes, it's true, haha, big, you know, long villain speech, you know how those things go. Uh, but Zero, of course, manages to defeat him, um, and um, he moves on to the rest of Final Weapon to try to shut down the core. Um, but it's too late. Sigma's already powered it up, and it's about to obliterate the Earth and totally wreck them. And really, why would they build a giant orbital laser cannon? I don't understand. <laughs> um, but Zero uh, eventually uh, confronts General, who is the leader of the Rebel Force. Uh, you basically defeat him in a previous fight. He goes to prove that uh, he's basically only has peaceful intents in mind, and he sacrifices himself by throwing him into the core of the final weapon and shutting it down so that the humans on Earth are spared, even though he was defecting from them. Um, Zero then goes back home and he starts questioning if all Reploids are destined to become Maverick. So in Mega Man X5, uh, some interesting things start to happen. There's multiple endings to this game. Um, only one of them is technically canon. Uh, that means that it's the only one that connects to um, the next game in the series. Um, but there's some really interesting tidbits of information that are strewn about um, in those other endings. So I'm going to touch on that, but we're only going to focus on the one. Um, so it's been several months. Sigma hasn't returned. It's time of peace. Everyone's really happy. Uh, but it seems like Sigma is presumed to be gathering virus energy during this time. He's kind of laying low and he's charging up his buster or whatever the heck it is that he's got uh, for a really long time. Uh, Zero keeps having dreams about Dr. Wily, but he still has no idea what the heck that means. Uh, so Sigma decides that he's no longer going to um, take over the world. He is going to just destroy it. He's fed up. He's done. Um, X and Zero go and fight Sigma, who is attacking a city. He explodes, and when he explodes, he spreads that virus data all over the world. Basically, anything with a computer system is now infected. Uh, it's going to take a lot more than a beam saber to disinfect that computer. So X and Zero are then dispatched to go and collect parts for the Enigma cannon and, uh, and a space shuttle to basically destroy a space colony that has somehow been infected in orbit and is going to crash into the Earth like a giant meteor. It's basically going to wreck everything. Um, at some point, Zero stumbles upon a capsule intended for Mega Man X to collect and get upgrade parts to, and he speaks with Dr. Light. Um, Dr. Light basically tells Zero the dreams that he's having about Dr. Wily are probably just junk data, but it's not clear if Dr. Light is lying to Zero so that he doesn't learn the truth about Dr. Wily, or if he like literally has no idea what he's talking about. 
So, of course, the space colony is destroyed, but the remaining uh, chunks of the space colony still impact the Earth and leaves the planet in ruins. <laughs> Uh, the center of the crater, however, there is an energy signature that seems to match zeros. Uh, it's remarked on by Alia, who's a Maverick Hunter operator, that instead of infecting zero, he seems to be getting stronger while he's at the center of this crater. And we're not really sure why that is. Uh, X and Zero basically meet up in the center of the crater, no matter which way you decide to go in the game. Um, and they basically accuse each other of being mavericks, which I feel is just a complete breakdown of communication. Uh, and they have an epic battle to one of the best songs in the entire Mega Man franchise. Um, but they're both defeated, they poop each other out, uh, and then Sigma shows up and basically wrecks them. Um, Zero begins to realize who he is and what he was destined to be, um, and his memory is still failing. Uh, but he manages to get off one extra charge shot at Sigma and defeat the remains of Sigma and finally ends it once for all. Uh, depending on the ending, um, X seems to lose memory of Zero and remarks that he wants to build an Elysium for all Reploids. Now, those of you who have played the Legend series know where I'm going with this, but sit tight, we're going to get there. So while the Elysium ending is not actually canon, uh, it just means that X didn't say it in the canon ending, but he's still probably thinking it, so I think it's just as valid. Uh, in the true ending, which is a lot more boring in my opinion, uh, he basically just shows that he's improving as a hunter and, you know, thinks about his adventures with Zero. Uh, in both endings, however, something really interesting happens. Um, X and Zero are both basically laying on the floor, left for dead, uh, but a hologram of Dr. Light shows up out of nowhere, and there doesn't seem to be an upgrade capsule in sight, um, and it seems to heal uh, Mega Man X miraculously. There's really no explanation given for how this is possible. The only clue to this is that if you look in the background of the boss room for Mega Man X5, right at the final boss, you notice that there's a blue capsule and a red capsule with schematics for Mega Man X and Zero in the background. Um, it's possible that this is the original capsule that X was brought, uh, was hidden underground with, and the same thing for Zero. It could be that these are the capsules that they were placed in by their respective professors. Uh, Mega Man X6 Gate, a reploid scientist, unwittingly revives Sigma by reconstructing the virus code from a small piece of zero that he found in the middle of the wreckage of the Eurasia colony. Um, other than that, Sigma probably would have faded away at this point, just being completely destroyed. Um, but of course, you know, Gate has to ruin everything by bringing Sigma back. Um, Isaac, a reploid scientist, is also speculated to be yet another avatar of Dr. Wily, but his involvement is minimal. We're not really sure what his deal is, but he talks and acts a lot like Dr. Wily. Uh, how Dr. Wily continues to have reploid bodies to inhabit is unknown, unless he too is some sort of virtual consciousness like Dr. Light is with the capsules. But I guess Dr. Wily travels in style, so he wants to have a body. Nothing else of importance really happens in X6. <laughs> I can hear the cheers already. <laughs> uh, Axel, everybody's favorite Maverick Hunter, uh, is a next generation reploid. Uh, he basically takes the copyability of Mega Man to a whole nother level. He doesn't just copy the weapons of other Reploids, he copies the entire Reploid. Um, he basically assimilates uh, their DNA soul, uh, which is that thing we mentioned way back in Mega Man Extreme 2. Um, uh, one of the Mavericks, Snipe Anteater, who is a hacking Reploid, uh, basically looks inside of Zero's brain and he sees a long dormant code that is hiding his true purpose. Uh, Sigma revives and once again is defeated by X-Zero and now Axel. So in the next game, Mega Man X-8, uh, there's a big shift in technology. Um, a lot of people were a little bit adverse to this when they first saw it. I know I was when this game was announced. Basically, they've kind of ditched that really chunky kind of robot design that Mega Man is known for, and they start slimming down a little bit. Um, Basically, this is hinting that technology is moving forward and Reploids are becoming more human-like. Um, it's getting closer and closer to the kind of uh, design that we see in the Mega Man Zero series, where now they don't really have big clunky chest piece or anything, they just have a cool looking jacket. During Mega Man X8, next generation Reploids basically become the new standard of Reploids used in the Jacob Project, an orbital elevator thus rekindling mankind's interest in space exploration and colonizing the moon. Now, if you ask me, I think rockets are a lot safer than a giant orbital elevator because if that thing ever fell, man, I don't know what it is about the Mega Man universe, but they are just full of bad ideas. Uh, Sigma begins his new plot to threaten the world and the next generation Reploids led by Lumine, and they head for the moon, a Reploid-only sanctuary. Now, I, where have I heard that before? 
Lumine uh, reveals himself to be the mastermind behind the plan and that all next generation Reploids have basically consumed Sigma and they can take on his form at any time. Um, basically what this means is Sigma thought he was pulling a fast one on all these next generation Reploids by putting his code inside all these new guys, but it turns out they're so advanced they're able to just assimilate him and now Sigma is basically just another body that these Reploids can copy. Sigma played himself. Um, Lumine is then defeated by uh, the Maverick Hunter team, uh, but not before poisoning Axel with some as of yet identified uh, infection. We don't know what this one is because Capcom's holding out on us and we don't have an X9 yet, uh, but basically Axel turns this weird white purple color that matches Lumine's color scheme. And what happens after that with him is not quite known. Uh, now Mega Man X Command Mission, uh, this is an interesting uh, point of, of info here. Uh, I had a hard time when I was making this figuring out where the heck Mega Man X Command Mission fits into the timeline. Um, it doesn't. Uh, apparently in an interview with one of the developers, it was revealed that uh, Command Mission is an alternate future of X7. So you can play all the games all the way up to Mega Man X7, and then instead of going to X8, you just kind of branch off and go to Command Mission. Dare so. I say Mega Man X7 is the Ocarina of Time of the Mega Man franchise? <laughs> That's it. I'm taking his name out of the bucket. <laughs> uh, so the human government decides at this point they've had enough with all of these mavericks and stuff, and they realize that, oh yeah, Zero is kind of the cause of all this stuff, and they figured that sealing him away um, is probably the best thing to do. Zero, of course, doesn't want any trouble, so he accepts, and he goes to sleep for a while. Uh, when Zero is put into stasis, they manage to separate his body and his mind from each other, so that they're two separate entities at this point. Um, and they start doing Sigma virus-related experiments, probably to try and easier ways of curing it or figuring out how potent it is, etc. Um, at this point, Dr. Wheel, Dr. Weil, I don't know, these names are hard. <laughs> and, uh, and Ciel's great-grandmother are among the scientists who do this research. Ciel is someone that we're going to see coming right up. Uh, through these studies, they find that any program uh, capable of living in the physical world and able to alter the minds of reploids is classified as a cyber elf. This includes the Sigma virus. Basically, it's like uh, free floating data stuff like that can just kind of move around and infect other reploids. Uh, cyber elves are especially adept at rewriting code, uh, and they can manifest that code into the physical world, kind of like how Zero Saber was able to be a physical manifestation of an antivirus. That's just what they can do. Um, this magic-like ability makes cyber elves very powerful and very valuable. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm gonna take over here for the cyber elf wars. So the cyber elves can also be a physical projection of the reploid's soul, as we mentioned earlier, into the real world. This data manipulation ability, they have the, uh, they, they use that to develop the mother elf, which allows for quick and far-reaching the cure of the Maverick virus for the very first time, which is pretty cool. Now, X makes the decision to fully delete the Maverick virus from all Reploids with the Mother Elf, ending the era known as the Maverick War. So we're fully putting a close to the Mega Man X saga at this point. So in the human scientist known as Dr. Whale, he uh, suggests that taking things further by implementing Project Elpizo, which would use the Mother Elf to control all Reploids. Okay, so we actually have 10 minutes left, so we're running a little short on time here. All right, well, so, we could probably wrap it up a little bit. What, what was that? Good. Okay. But uh, yeah, we could, we could probably also still go a little bit faster anyways, since we still have a lot to cover. Okay, okay so X obviously opposes the idea, and uh, he feels that this is basically replished slavery. So he doesn't want another war with the Mavericks, and, but however, the humans, they allow Dr. Whale to do as he pleases, which isn't good. So his secret agenda takes shape and it quickly controls the world with all Reploids now under his command. And Omega is his ultimate weapon. This is crazy powerful Reploid that's made using Zero's original body. And we're gonna get back to that in a little bit. So Zero, his mind is placed into a copy of his body to continue with the war effort. And his original body is now controlled by Omega and is placed in a uh, power reducing shell due to his godlike powers. Like they can't even contain how strong this is. One giant misconception is that Omega is using, Z is using Zero's X era body, but uh, Zero was already in his Mega Man Zero body when Omega was created. 
because in Mega in Megaman Zero Three, you actually do fight Omega Zero, and you know a lot of people were wondering why aren't you fighting Zero with this original sprite? But that's kind of why, because Zero was already. Um, it's actually not an art style change. Uh, a lot of people thought, hum. Uh, no, it's not because of the art style change. Um, as I mentioned before in X8, um, they actually are slimming their bodies down. Um, originally, it was thought that, but it's like a physical change in their bodies. So, like they're trying actually physically changing, which becomes important later. Well, we'll get to that probably at the end. Um, I mm -hmm. want we want to get through this real quick. So, back to Doctor Whale. Doctor Whale creates two copies of the Mother Elf known as the Baby Elves. But, however, X and Zero defeat him, and he succeed in capturing the Mother Elf and defeating Dr. Will for the first time. Let me just get ahead. Okay, all right. So, there's some more important stuff that's going on, basically, in the Elf Wars. We're gonna try to, like, skip through a little bit. I wanna make sure that we can have time to go for the, for the giveaway yeah. that we're doing here at the end. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the end of the Elf Wars okay. real quick. Um, basically, some really important bullet points here is that um, this Mother Elf thing is super powerful. It can reprogram all robots in the world to do whatever they want. Dr. Wheel has control of it. X decides that he's gonna step in. He sacrifices his body to contain it. Um, basically, X is the only reploid that seems to be incorruptible to virus attacks and reprogramming and things like that, and he seems to have he's infinite not a power. Hmm? Well, well, he's not a rep, he's technically a robot, but he basically contains uh, the Dark Elf and he seals it. He's the only person who can do it because no one else is as powerful as him. Uh, basically, X gets split into five parts. His soul is split. This creates the four guardians that you see in Mega Man Zero, uh, and the Cyber Elf X is what remains of his soul. <clears throat> so during the events of Mega Man Zero One, Zero was uh, woken up by um, a, a scientist named Ciel. She basically is running from uh, attacks from New York Arcadia. Basically, it's the last city on Earth that was built uh, by Ciel and Mega Man X after the events of the X series. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. So he's basically running from this giant war machine known as a golem. Uh, he's unable to damage her properly. X's cyber elf appears and then gives Zero his a trademark Z saber again so he can continue kicking butt in the Mega Man Zero series. Uh, after defeating Copy X, who is basically a copy of Mega Man X built to cover up the fact that X has died, um, Basically, Neo Arcadia is not sure what to do anymore, and they put the four guardians uh, in control. Um, Phantom of the four guardians is killed, so now they're more like the three guardians. Uh, CL believes that by solving the energy crisis, though, that is currently going on in the Mega Man Zero world, um, that maybe there will be peace between humans and reploids. Um, and so she starts work on a project that will be able to generate infinite energy in the future. Um, the E-crystals that you see in the Mega Man Zero series that you use as currency uh, is possibly the same E-crystals that you see in the Mega Man X series in Crystal Snail Stage uh, and possibly ties into the Legend series, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, so in Mega Man Zero 2, a reploid named El Pizzo has no confidence in the solution of this infinite energy source, and he basically says, no way, I'm going to wage a full-on war, and I'm going to destroy them all myself. Uh, but he gets his butt kicked, but he decides, you know what, I'm going to go back again, and I'm going to do something else. I'm going to do something drastic and take over the Dark Elf. He goes in, destroys X's body, and then takes the Dark Elf for himself. Uh, Zero runs in and defeats him. Um, the Dark Elf reveals uh, that it can turn people into Cyber Elves and saves El Pizzo's life so that he doesn't, you know, just die right there on the spot. And Cyber Elf X appears and tells Zero what the real purpose of the Dark Elf is. Uh, a shaky truce is made between New Arcadia and Ciel. Uh, she basically promises, hey, if you guys stop killing all of us, I'm going to give you guys infinite energy and it's going to be totally awesome. So they decide, okay, maybe we should kind of leave them alone. Uh, Omega, however, decides that he's going to show up again, uh, and he's incredibly powerful. As we mentioned before, he's like a god. No one can defeat him. Uh, but, of course, Zero shows up, and he goes to defeat him because he's Zero, and he can do that kind of stuff. Um, Cyber Elf X reminds Zero that even though he's in a fake body, his heart is the same, and that's where all of his power comes from. Um, but the destruction of Omega's body basically knocks him unconscious. 
Uh, and X uh, divulges to Zero that he doesn't have much time left in the world because his body was destroyed by Alpizo in the previous uh, game. Basically, a cyber elf, if it's created from a reploid, if their original body is destroyed, they don't have much time left in the world. They'll basically fade away because they don't have a source to return to. Uh, so in Mega Man Zero Four, uh, humans basically start leaving Neo Arcadia. They're like, you know, we're tired of all this war and stuff. We kind of want to live in peace with everyone. Um, but Dr. Wheel reemerges and basically tells everyone, hey, if you leave this city, you are not, you're going to be branded as a maverick and we're going to kill all of you guys too. So of course, Zero comes in, he cleans house, and he decides, nah, that's not going to fly with me. We have to go and stop this Dr. Wheel guy. So through a certain number of events, basically Dr. Wheel goes to another floating orbital space laser cannon thing, and he decides, I'm going to crash it into the Earth, I'm tired of losing, and basically that's his plan. Zero, of course, defeats him, the space station explodes, and nothing of Zero remains except for a small broken helmet. So after Mega Man Zero Four, some of this material comes as speculation, but we're going to just go ahead and try to get through that. Um, CL finally finishes her uh, CL system. Infinite energy is now a possibility. Um, she also discovers that cyber elves last a lot longer if they have a host body they can return to. And she begins to working on this technology known as uh, a biometal. Basically, the DNA soul of a reploid can be put inside of a biometal and they can be preserved indefinitely. Um, these biometals basically preserve the reploid's uh, personality and all of their traits, but however, they suffer from memory loss because it's kind of like starting a computer up for the first time. Um, if you reformat your hard drive, it's still a computer, it's still the same one you had, but none of the data is there. Uh, the biometals are basically taken to this thing called the W Core. It's the leftovers of Ragnarok from the previous game, the giant space station, uh, and they're going to basically shut it down. The W Core has the ability to cause great destruction on the Earth and also still control reploids like Wheel did in the Mega Man Zero series, um, and the biometals are used to basically shut it down. Um, However, as they get close to the W Core, all of the reploids that are in CL's team trying to shut it down all start going maverick, especially one named Serpent. I mean, with a name like that, he, he kind of seems like he was going to betray you anyway. Uh, Serpent seems to return from absolutely nowhere. No one had heard from him for a while. And he decides, hey, that's CL's idea, but I'm going to make it my own. He's heralded as a hero. He says, look, I bring infinite energy. I have this awesome technology um, that can save the world. And he basically takes it for his own. Um, the Guardians are formed. It's basically a Maverick Hunter uh, successor uh, run by someone named uh, Prairie. She basically decides that she's going to take over for CL and try to protect the world. Um, and they become the Guardians of the planet, basically. Uh, Legion, a new world government is formed, uh, held uh, basically run by someone called the Sage Trinity. Uh, their names are Albert, Thomas, and Mikael, named after Dr. Thomas Light. Dr. Albert Wiley and Dr. Mikhail Cossack. Uh, however, there's not too much connection to them right now outside of their names, but it seems like it's a little bit foreboding. Uh, Albert decides that for peace to be achieved, humans and reploids have to stop fighting and they kind of have to shake hands. And by shake hands, he means they have to start mixing parts. Uh, reploids are given lifespans so that they are more human and they can't just outlive people forever. And humans are given reploid technology um, so that uh, they can extend their own lifespans if they were to so choose. Anyone who doesn't play by these rules is considered a maverick and they're hunted down. Uh, the line between human and reploid is blurred be, uh, beyond recognition and a new species is created called humanoids. Um, the only difference between humanoids and reploids is that pure reploids that have no uh, bi uh, uh, bioorganic parts basically have a red triangle placed on their forehead, kind of like X's forehead gem. Uh, if you play the Mega Man ZX series, um, you start seeing these NPCs throughout the game, and that's the only differentiating, uh, differentiating feature of them. Uh, this new humanoid organism uh, has all the right components to basically interface with the biometal and unlock the reploid that's inside. Um, biometals on their own are basically just a hunk of metal that can talk. Um, but because humanoids have just enough human components and just enough reploid components, they can basically merge with them and uh, don the armor of that reploid. They're basically a Power Rangers morpher. Yeah, if you want, if you anyone here is familiar with Common Rider, it's the <laughs> same concept. So Serpent, the guy who stole all the technology, found Slither Incorporated, uh, and he basically becomes an energy company. He sells it to people. He's making tons of money. He's basically living it big. 
Um, uh, basically, uh, Maverick attacks start uh, rising during this time, even though there's supposed to be all sorts of prosperity. Everyone was expecting these to get more peaceful. Instead, they just got more violent. Maverick attacks start sprouting up all over the place. Uh, and in one of these Maverick attacks, um, Vent and Ale, who are uh, supposedly brother and sister, it's not really stated explicitly, their parents are killed in one of these uh, Maverick attacks. Um, another Reploid named Jiro, uh, who looks very similar to Zero, uh, decides that he's going to adopt the two of them. Uh, for the sake of consistency with later portions of the timeline, we're going to assume that you're playing Mega Man ZX as Vent. Uh, Vent is the male character that you can choose in this game. Uh, through a series of events, Vent is chosen by Model X, and he basically turns into the, uh, the new embodiment of Mega Man X and can use all of his powers. Uh, he basically goes on to meet up with Jiro to stop a Maverick attack because, of course, Jiro has been uh, chosen by Model Z to become the new embodiment of Zero. Uh, during a battle, however, on a highway that looks strikingly similar to the first stage of Mega Man X1, um, Jiro goes Maverick for some reason, and it looks like he's under some sort of mind control. He gets red eyes, and he kind of goes berserk. Uh, Serpent shows up, and he shows that, hey, I'm the one who's behind all of this. I'm not going to hide it any longer. You brought the biometals to me. I can use those now uh, to my advantage. Um, he shows up, and he reveals that he has a crew of Mega Men. And I'm saying that with emphasis because uh, Mega Man, up to this point, has always been a person. He's always been a robot or a reploid or something like that. But now Mega Man is a title, and it's not just a person. Um, anyone who is a Mega Man is someone who can Mega Merge using the Meta Encapsulated Granule Awareness System, or the Mega System for short. Uh, basically, they merge, and that's how they become the superhero that you see right here. Uh, in Japanese, it's called the Rock System, which stands for Rebirth of Crystallized Knowledge. Um, basically, it's just implying that their consciousness is inside of these biometals. Uh, Serpent reveals that he possesses Model W, uh, and two of his minions, uh, Pandora and Prometheus, show up and drain the passcodes inside of Model X and Model Z so that they can reawaken the W core that CL sealed back in the Mega Man Zero series. Uh, Serpent also announces that his Model W gives him the ability uh, to control other biometals, which explains why Jiro went insane before. That was all Serpent's doing. On the brink of death, Jiro instructs Model Z to fuse the Model X, and Jiro then dies. Both model, uh, biometals become one, and even though they're one object now, they seem to retain their individuality and can talk to him um, on their own basis. Vent goes to face Serpent and defeats him, but Pandora and Prometheus reveal themselves as the true masterminds to unlock the W core. It looks like they were playing Serpent for a fool. This was all their plan that they wanted to do. Um, however, Serpent reveals that, nope, I'm going to take over the show again. And uh, he's been staging all the Maverick attacks and raids, including the one that killed Vent and Ale's parents, so that the W core can power up and feed off of the suffering and sadness of Reploids and humans. Man, that is evil. Uh, basically, this is another form of evil energy. Again, going way back to Mega Man 8, uh, evil energy plays a really big role in this series. Uh, basically, this just reinforces that emotions can be converted into power and energy. Uh, Serpent mocks Vent, however, uh, explaining that because he's fighting him with rage and intense emotions like this, he's actually not defeating him. He's just powering him up, and he's just making it easier for him. Uh, the biometals then decide they're going to chime in and instruct Vent to fight with courage and positive emotions rather than uh, rage and hatred. I mean, maybe he could have put on like an episode of Bob Ross or something while fighting him. That's pretty positive, I think. Uh, and he generates justice energy and goes on to defeat Serpent. Uh, Vent later goes on to join the Guardians and promises to continue fighting, basically re re reviving the legacy of Mega Man. Uh, again, in ZX Advent, we're going to assume that you're playing as Gray, the male character of this game. Uh, his story seems to line up the best with the timeline. Uh, after stumbling into a lab, two hunters accidentally release Gray, a reploid boy. Uh, Gray's eyes are red, indicating that he was under mind control, just like Jiro was previously. Uh, Gray escapes and acquires his hunter's license and embarks on a mission to deliver a biometal to Legion, the world government, but he's attacked by Prometheus and Pandora. Uh, of course, as fate would have it, he merges with uh, uh, Model A and he turns into a new reploid that looks strikingly similar to Axel. Model A, uh, just like Axel, um, doesn't 
copy abilities. He basically turns into the Reploids that he copies. Um, whereas Model Z and Model X in the previous games kind of form like a fusion. They don't have to do a dance or anything for it, they just kind of do it. Um, something called the Game of Destiny is basically created to weed out all of the remaining Mega Men in the world until there's only one Mega Man left, and that one is basically going to be the one who can control the world. Uh, Albert of the Sage Trinity, however, seems that we have a re repeating history here with people named Albert. Uh, he decides that he's going to take over the world and he's going to become the ultimate Mega Man and he's going to reset the world as he sees fit. Uh, the real Albert uh, reappears, basically his dummy body was destroyed before, and he calls himself uh, DAN000, which is possibly Dr. Albert number, which is mimicking the DLN and DWN style of numbers from the classic series. Uh, Gray eventually goes on to defeat Albert, um, and, but despite the apparent destruction, Master Thomas of the Sage Trinity, uh, Trinity reflects to Mikael that Albert's methods were flawed, and reveals that the four Mega Men playing in the game of Destiny were under his control the entire time. Reflecting on humanoids, he now feels things should be taken a step further, creating an all new organism rather than the mere combination of humans with reploid parts, which created the humanoids. Um, this is believed to be the predecessor to the life form known as Betas, which show up in the Mega Man Legends series. You want to go ahead? Yeah. <clears throat> so, Thomas then reveals that it was his plan to set um, Albert's plan into motion, his demise, and sending the hunters after him so that his own plans could come to fruition instead. His final remark is that this world needs to be reset. Which brings us to way later, pre-legends. So an unknown event of time has passed, though it is believed that to be several thousand years. So this is like way, 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 way in the future. The Elder System is put into place, but not much is known about it. And it's presumed that it can control the, the world on a real global scale. So, betas are created, and they're known as the first version of Thomas's new form of human reploids, hybrids, which is a step above humanoids. Pure humans, however, still exist. But as we can see, um, it's getting to a point where reploids or robots and humans are becoming one and the same, and we're kind of getting to that. And Legends is kind of the end of that. So at an unknown time, the planet has been flooded, wiping out most of the population that had failed to escape. And when Thomas says the world needs to be reset, he may be referring to this flooding event. This might sound like Wind Waker, and yeah, it does kind of sound like Wind Waker. Mega Man did it first. Yes, it did. Legends came out before Wind Waker. However, pure, the pure humans, they escaped the planet and Elysium is established, which is a massive artificial structure well into the, you know, just like in space, that is now referred to as Terra. So Elysium is considered to be a perfect utopia. Death, hunger, sadness, and most of their negative emotions are kind of completely eliminated for humans, so this is like their perfect life. The master system on Terra is shut down and replaced with the, uh, the elder, sorry, the elder system on Terra is shut down and replaced with what's called the master system, which is now running from an orbit in the Elysium. Not to be confused with the Sega Master System. Yes, <laughs> Sega was behind us. <laughs> the Master System seems to control many aspects of the Earth, but most importantly, its population. With betas phased out, a new kind of species known as carbons are created to populate the Earth in their place, wiping out the remnants of the original population of Earth. So the world is destroyed and replaced with this new thing known as carbons. I call them carbons, but yeah, whatever. Carbons are version two of the betas. They created, they, uh, created from genetic samples stored within the Elysium genetic library. As a result, carbons are modular and can easily swap body parts for large machinery, which is why in Mega Man Legends, when Mega Man gets a new power-up, his arm literally becomes that power-up. So it's like, it's like humans are now basically like, they're almost like these little robots. You can just take them apart and put new pieces on them for them to do new abilities. Kind of like living action figures. You can just yeah. pop an arm off and put in a new one in its place. And though, possess, and though possessing free will, carbons are secretly at the mercy of their creators, unfortunately. So the moon, or at least them, they're controlling everything. So they're not, you know, they're, they, they're still under some sort of control, even though they do have free will. Reaver bots are placed on Terra to protect the remains of the Elder System, Master System, and the Elysian technology. And Reaver bots are kind of important. 
So the exact purpose of these Reverbots is pretty much unknown. However, they do protect the refractor crystals, which is a giant power source, basically. Like, everything could be powered by these refractor crystals. And this kind of technology would be used for thousands of years. So these giant monoliths are placed in orbit over populated land masses known as Eden, um, known as Eden monoliths, and they're filled with thousands of Reverbots. And each land mass is governed by a bureaucratic unit, which monitors the population of the land. And should the population grow too large, they can uh, establish this reinitialization process, which releases the Reverbots and just starts killing people. So they want to keep the population at a certain number. So if it's too big, they're just said, all right, we're going to start killing people. We got to the reset button. They hit the reset like... button, start over. It's kind of messed up. However, each iteration of life on Terra is built upon an existing civilization with all the amenities and modern technologies they would ever need. So they can never have ambition to try traveling to Elysium. So they're just like, well, why, why do I got to go up there? I got everything I need over here. There's no reason to. This is likely why the people of Terra have gravity-defying flying machines. Like, they could just do whatever they want. It's kind of cool. And also they have, like, multi-stage rockets are now just a lost technology. So we're far beyond what we had in the classic, and even the X series, for that matter. This is just, this is some new kind of technology that is just never before seen. It's really impressive. Now, eventually, all humans on Elysium, they die. And the exact reason for it is unknown, unfortunately. It might be their own decision, since technically they are immortal, but so maybe they found a way to essentially kill themselves off. Yeah, I guess living for thousands of years might get pretty boring, so yeah. they, they chose to end it themselves, is the likely theory. Especially since they're watching the reinitialization process happen, because I believe it's implied that's happened several times over. Mm -hmm. The master, quote unquote, is the last living pure human. He travels to Terra with Mega Man Trigger, his favorite purifier unit, we'll get into what a purifier unit is later, to observe how the carbons live their lives. And the island that they land on to observe is called uh, Calvania Island. So the master, however, cannot survive for very long outside of Elysium, which sustained him at this point for over 3,000 years. So before passing away, the master gives Trigger a sample of his genetic code, a password for Trigger that he can use to destroy the master system. The master wonders if the pain-free lifestyle of Elysium is really better than the carbons finding happiness in spite of their fragile little lives. Now, that is the struggle with Gibbs on the happy moments there. That, yeah, so like the people who, even though they're happy lives, they don't really have meaning. It's just kind of just like, well, I'm just living my life. Nothing's really coming out of it. Yeah, the, basically they need struggle to give those happy moments meaning. Mm -hmm. So fearing that Mega Man Trigger's memories would be kind of messed with before he can destroy the system, it, this, this, this guy's guy already doing the dance. So <laughs> this little monkey robot known as Data is created to store Trigger's memory. So in case something would happen to him, there's always a backup. It's also used to just be meta because that's how you save your game. <laughs> and uh, Sarah, which is an Elysium mother unit, attempts to confront Trigger before he can shut down the system. Yuna, Sarah's counterpart, remains neutral in Trigger's decision. Sarah cannot comprehend shutting down the system as it has been her, Yuna, and Elysium's way of life for thousands of years. So she's like, I'm not going to do this because we've had this for so long. Why? Trigger and Sarah battle until they both reach a stalemate and are unable to move. Now the next two points are speculative story, but it is derived from in-game evidence. Since Trigger was left on Calbania Island, Sarah must have activated its Eden monolith to destroy the inhabitants of that island, likely out of spite for Trigger. At some point, Trigger shoots down the Eden monolith and it crashed into Calbania Island. Since it was shot down before completing its work, it never gets a chance to rebuild or repopulate the island with carbons, which is why it, we see it in game as being mostly barren and empty. So that's probably a reason why it's kind of like post apocalyptic. It can then become the future location of the Air Pirate Glide's base of operations. You want to take over? Yeah. So, uh Yuna basically takes this opportunity, since the, uh, Yuna and Mega Man Trigger are both extremely exhausted, uh, to seal them away and put them in separate corners of the room. Basically, she has to split the two of them up, uh, very much playing into her mother unit status. Definitely acting kind of motherly here. 
Um, Trigger goes to a place called Nino Island, and Sarah gets placed on Forbidden Island, which is a very welcoming name. Uh, however, when Trigger is placed on Nino Island, he is reverted back to a baby because he, su he sustained too much damage and basically has to reset. Uh, due to the flooded nature of the planet that we mentioned earlier, uh, basically carbons that are still living on Terra basically live out their lives on islands and small land masses and occasionally large countries, but for the most part, everything is very small islands. Uh, quantum refractor crystals, which are buried very deep in the Earth, become the primary energy source. Um, but yet another energy crisis begins to plague the world. Uh, refractors are speculated to be the same E-crystals that you've been collecting throughout the Mega Man Zero and ZX series. Yeah, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the demand for these becomes so high that the job of a digger becomes the uh, main source of finding these refractors. Uh, diggers are basically the heroes of the modern world. Without them, technology in the world wouldn't be able to work. Uh, normally ranging from small to large, rumor spreads about a legendary massive uh, refractor crystal known as the Mother Load, which can produce infinite energy. Uh, the CL system that we mentioned earlier is speculated to possibly be this Mother Load that was rumored. Uh, the story of Yuna and Sarah uh, and the battle that they had with Trigger um, is basically uh, passed down through time, becomes a legend about two goddesses. Um, but not too many details remain because that island that it happened on is basically a barren wasteland now. Um, over the years, people attempt to visit Forbidden Island, um, but basically they keep getting knocked out from the weather or killed, um, and they basically uh, never leave the island. Um, people go missing. However, uh, Yuna is the cause of this and has been putting people in little stasis fields like she did for, uh, for Mega Man. Uh, to basically make sure that no one comes back. Anyone who goes to Forbidden Island, they're stuck there forever. Uh, this basically adds to the mystique of Forbidden Island, and people start wondering if the reason why people are going missing is because the mother load is here. Uh, so 100 years before the uh, first Mega Man Legends game, uh, Catalog's Island is discovered with remnants of a previous civilization uh, on its surface. High quality refractors are found there, and basically people start populating the island. Uh, rumors, however, begin to spread that every hundred years a great disaster strikes and wipes out the population, which is the reinitialization program that we mentioned earlier. Uh, Barrel Casket and Werner von Blucher uh, go to Forbidden Island in their youth, but succumb to the weather. But however, Yuna, for some reason or other, saves them and brings them back to Kalinka Island with minor amnesia. Roll's parents, however, decide that they're going to ask Barrel and Blucher to hold their beer and see if they can get there as well. They create a dropship and land on Forbidden Island safely. Safely. <laughs> uh, Yuna takes pity on them as well because they succumb to the weather uh, and brings Banner back to Kalinka Island with major amnesia and he doesn't even remember his name. Uh, however, Matilda, Roll's mother, um, is basically experiencing uh, uh, severe damage to her body. She can't live for much longer. So Yuna takes pity on her and they swap minds. Basically, uh, Yuna jumps into the body of Matilda to keep her alive, and Matilda is just kind of kept in the back of her head. So until Yuna's body can be repaired, she's stuck in Matilda's body. Uh, however, this had the unexpected side effect of revoking her mother unit rights and freeing her from the master system, allowing her to finally think freely for the first time. Uh, Barrel takes Roll in as his own daughter since uh, her parents went missing when she was just a baby. Uh, and Banner begins a new life as a mechanic uh, on Yosyonka village under the name Joe. Uh, sometime on an illegal dig in Nina Ruins, however, Barrel stumbles upon a Mega Man Trigger's capsule where he was a baby uh, and basically sets him free along with Data. Uh, but because this was an illegal dig and he wasn't supposed to be in there, he can't tell anyone where he got the baby from and just claims him as his grandson. Um, for the rest of the Legend series, we're going to refer to him as either Volnut or Rock. Uh, this is basically part of a plot twist that the translators for the English version of Mega Man Legends didn't get. So um, to not spoil it, we're going to go ahead and continue as that. Uh, during the misadventures of Tronbon, Serbot 34 orders a lunch special curry rice. <laughs> Serbot 29 orders a lunch special spaghetti. Serbot 41 orders a lunch special curry rice. Serbot 6 has his laziness <laughs> tortured out of him. Serbot 12 orders a lunch special B, uh, B lunch. Serbot 41 goes for seconds A lunch. <laughs> Serbot 19 returns with 600 zenny. And Serbot 1 orders a lunch special spaghetti. Nothing else of importance to the timeline occurs. That's the entire game summed up in one slide. 
Uh, in Mega Man Legends, Volnut is now uh, 14 years old and he becomes a really great digger. He is escaping from a ruin and basically jumps onto a ship, which then later crash lands on Catalox Island. Uh, while there, he's hunting down refractors to repair the flutter, but soon after he encounters the Bon Air Pirates and battles them for the island treasures. Uh, his adventures lead him to the main gate, a giant ruin that nobody has ever seen open in many, many years. Uh, no one's really sure what's in there. Uh, while he's searching for the keys to open up the main gate, he comes across computer systems that have a language on it that he can read for some reason, and he's not quite sure why. This must be some sort of lost language. Um, in the art museum, there's several artifacts and things like that that seem to depict um, the coming battle between Mega Man and whatever's in the main gate, but no one's really sure why that's depicted there. Either Mega Man was there a long time ago or possibly someone else. Uh, the main gate also unlocks several sub-cities on the island where the betas used to live. Um, this underground city that Mega Man goes to explore uh, has an artificial sky. It's basically not real. It just kind of looks like some weird cosmic painting. Um, this is perhaps where the betas tried to hide during the great flooding event and waited for it to pass. Obviously, they wouldn't want to be looking at a ceiling for thousands of years waiting for the flood to go away. Uh, inside the main gate, uh, Volna encounters Mega Man Juno, a third-class bureaucratic unit who's basically in charge of resetting the island uh, whenever there's too many people on it. That's basically his job, and he remarks that he's like, hey, Mega Man, you look different from when I saw you last, um, implying that they must have known each other in the past. Uh, Juno also uses Mega Man as a title now, which, as I mentioned before, is something they did in the ZX series, and it looks like that uh, titling uh, format that they use um, has basically carried on. Uh, so Mega Man may have evolved from anyone who can use uh, a biometal to a reploid servant of Thomas. In ZX, Mega Man were named after the biometals that they could use. For instance, if you used the Model X biometal, you were Mega Man X, Mega Man Zero, Mega Man Pandora, Mega Man Prometheus, etc., etc. So Mega Man Juno and Mega Man Trigger seems like a natural progression of what that title means. Uh, Juno also calls Trigger a purifier unit. Now, what's interesting is that in the Japanese version, it's not called a purifier unit. Um, it's basically, he's, he calls him an irregular hunter, which in the English version of the, of the text means maverick hunter. Uh, he also fights aberrant units, which are irregulars in the Japanese version, which are mavericks in the English version. This implies that somehow, Trigger may be distantly related to Mega Man X, or at least some system of control in which maverick hunters were still a thing. Uh, with this information, perhaps Thomas came to control Vent or Model X after he successfully reset the world. Uh, and if that's true, it would explain why Trigger is considered the master's favorite. Uh, if he had been working for Thomas for hundreds of years, it would explain why he's been around for so long and thus gained favorite status. Uh, Juno laments that uh, the population of Catalogs has gotten too high and he has to purge it. A uh, hundred years is probably about how long it takes for enough generation of people to fill up the island. Uh, Juno traps Trigger, but he is freed by the Bond Pirates, who allow him to take him on, and he manages to defeat him. An Eden monolith is called down by Juno to wipe out the population, um, and unfortunately, it's too late to stop Eden from purging the island, even if Juno is defeated. However, Data, your little safe point that follows you around throughout the game, surprisingly intervenes and issues an override command of a high clearance nice. level, deleting Juno's mind and sending Eden back to space. Uh, Data reveals his purpose as a memory backup, but says he can't give it back to Mega Man for his own good. We're not quite sure what that means yet, because Capcom's holding out on us yeah. again, and Legends 3 still isn't a thing. Uh, Volnut is considered a hero, and he flies off to go fight another day. You want to stop here for now? You can do the giveaway. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're running a little short on time. Um, I would like to sum up the rest of the Legends events, but I think what I'd like to do instead is go through uh, the raffle that I was uh, getting tickets for before. Um, mm -hmm. And if you guys have any questions about anything in the timeline, uh, I'd be happy afterwards if you wanted to go talk to me outside or anything like that. I would love to finish up the presentation for yes, anyone who can't do that. <laughs> we don't, don't bite. Know, I don't want to mess with bass, I'm sorry. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> All right. So, Proto Man, can I have beat, please? Bring us the bird. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and swish around inside my trusty Metsuo helmet. I'm going to pick out a name. You're going to come up to the front if your name is called. You're gonna reach inside Beat's mouth, and you're going to pull out a ticket, and that will determine the prize that you're gonna get, okay? So it's good we go. stuff. 
Can we get a drum roll? And the winner is... Uh, Kyle. Kyle. Do we have a Kyle in the audience? Yeah, come on up. Oh, hey, I saw you yesterday. I'm glad you made it. How's it going, Kyle? Go ahead and reach in. Let's see, what's his prize? Please, and tell us what prize you got. It's a bird. Well, you got two. Don't get greedy now. <laughs> Mega Man Zero Print. All yes, right. a Mega Man Zero Print. Woo! <laughs> you want me to, pull, to call out the next name? Yeah, go right ahead. Let me get the... No. Well, we can get at least one more. I know time's up. Thanks, time man. <laughs> Let's see. Scroll. There you are, man. Do we have a? Yeah, Michael Buren. Is that? Am I saying that name right? Yes. We got somebody coming up. Sweet. Let's get a round of applause for Michael. See what he gets. It's so suspenseful. Charms. Oh, you get the charms. Yeah. These are uh, Mega Man X and Zero reversible charms. Okay, I'll call up another name too. Can I get Ryan O? Is there a Ryan O? Yeah, come on right on up. Gotta call like two more. I guess I can call two more. Yes, I'm gonna keep on reading. <laughs> John Carter. What was that? Uh, Ryan had to go do like a staff thing. Can I accept? Yeah, yeah cool. that's fine. This is for Ryan. For Ryan! Rockman combat friend. Alrighty. Can I get Alex Gilbert? Did I say that right? I hope I'm saying people's names right. Cool. I apologize if I'm butchering people's names. All right, Brianna. Do we have a Brianna in here? Brianna, is it? Yep. Okay. <laughs> the other proto man. Come on up. Okay. Can I get Noel in here? Do we have a Noel? No. No. Anyone? DJ Jones. Yeah, come on up, DJ Jones. And then let me hear from Jonathan Hubbard. Awesome, good job. And also Samir. Do we have a Samir in the audience? Anyone? Yes? No? Maybe? Guess not. How about Amber Lee? Yeah, come on up. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, we got so many people, so many winners. Everybody's a winner. How about Andrew Wee? Or is that how you say your name? Andrew? Anybody named Andrew in the audience? <laughs> Just come on up. Oh, can I have the baggie? Sorry, but... That's no. Yeah, we got the grand prize. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it's actually very comfy. I do use that at home. I've got one too. It's actually excellent. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so how about Jackson Myers? Yeah. And Jerry Vents. Vents? Okay, cool. Eric Mon. All right, come on up. So, so that more prizes, right? All right, cool. I'm just gonna keep on reading. Once we run out of things in there. Okay. Maria B. Ooh, okay. This one's my favorite. Anthony Neal. Is that? Am I reading that right? 
Yep, come right on up. Those go in order, axles in the middle, and you can organize them any which way you like. Anytime. Steve Melnick. We're running out of the things we got left. Okay, so how much is it? Just those? Just how many these. do we have? If there's nothing left, that's okay. <laughs> we still got some more stuff. Yeah, we still got some more stuff. Right. Just let me know how much, how many more I can read off. <laughs> Three, four. So we have five right, more winners. So we got, we've got uh, five more prizes left. How many? Three already. Three already. Okay, right, so, so then two more. two more. Two more. Oh boy. Bill Martin. And last but not least, Nigel. Awesome. Eat the little mini fireman. Dr. Wiley. You get the last one. Last but not least, a tiny little mega The man. Mega Man! Thank you very, very much for coming out and sitting with us for this whole thing. I know it's a long haul, but you guys are amazing for coming. What was that? Five minutes over. Yeah, shut up, time man.